Ladies and gentlemen, it is wonderful to see all of those beautiful smiling faces of yours. Today, we are uh, just using a pencil. All you need today is a pencil with uh, an eraser. You are going to need an eraser. You are going to be erasing uh, several things today. I've been using the Sharpie a lot lately because it shows up better on camera. I've adjusted the camera settings a little bit, so hopefully the pencil will show up well enough that you can see it. So for today's drawing, we are going to be making a canyon, a canyon like out in the desert. So we're going to make this picture like we are looking down into the canyon. There's going to be like a cliff on both sides that goes down into the canyon. Then off in the distance, there's going to be some mountains and maybe some clouds in the sky. We'll figure that out as we go. This lesson is continuing on some of the landscape drawings I've done over the last couple of weeks. And it uses all the same thoughts. We're going to be overlapping for distance. We're going to be making the foreground in the front down at the bottom of the page. And then things getting farther away as they move towards the horizon. And speaking of the horizon, that's the way we're going to start. Since I'm using a pencil instead of a Sharpie, I will be able to erase any parts of the horizon that are covered up. So I am going to go ahead and start straight across the middle. It may not be perfectly straight. That's fine. That's fine. Mine's a little crooked, a little wobbly. Oh well. Oh well. Doesn't matter. Doesn't have to be perfect. Next, uh, on the two different sides, we're going to make the foreground. The foreground is the canyon top, the cliff, the, the tops of the cliffs that, you know, drop down. And so that's going to be on both sides. We're going to start that from the horizon down on both sides. We're going to make some janky lines. They're, they're going to be sort of ziggy-zaggy, but you don't want, let me, let me show you on the back. Let me show you what you don't want. You don't want like nice, neat, even zigs and zags. Because that's not what a cliff looks like. We want lots of janky. So check it out. Check it out. We're going to, you know, a little bit of the ways in. Not like in the middle, but closer to the edge. We're going to start at the horizon. We're going to zig. We're going to zag. We're going to zig and zag and zig and zag and notice that each one of those zigs and zags is different. Different sizes, uh, you know, some will go in further, some will come out further. Then we're going to do the same thing on the other side, but we don't want it to be a mirror image. We want it to be a different janky ziggy zaggy. So, zigs and zags and... Yeah. Now, the, that's sort of the edges of the two cliffs, where you could be standing on either one of these sides. But then if you're like walking towards the middle, whee, you jump down into the canyon and fall. Uh, to get that illusion to look three-dimensional, we want to see more than just one side of the cliff, right? We, we don't just want to see the top of the cliff. We also want to see the vertical part that goes down into the canyon. So here's how we're going to draw that. We're going to look at just one side at a time. We're going to start over here, then we're going to move over here. And on this ziggity-zaggity, this janky line we have, we're going to look for points that point inward. We don't want the points that point towards the edge of the page. We want the points that point towards the middle of the canyon. So we're going to find one of those, and we're going to put our pencil on that corner. And then from that corner, we're going to zip down... To the bottom of the paper but we're not just going to go straight down here we want a rocky bumpy line and you can see already how that looks like like this right here is like the top of a, a cliff where i could be walking walking towards the edge oh, i'm getting too close and we fall down off of that cliff right and we want that from all of these points that point towards the middle of the page. We don't want to do anything from these points that point that way towards the edge. But So this point, I'm going to leave it alone. This point here, I'm going to do one of my little rocky bumpy lines coming down towards the bottom. This point points towards the edge of the page, so I'll leave it alone. This one points towards the middle of the page, so I'm going to drop a ooh, 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 overlapping what happened right here. What happened right here is this cliff goes down behind this part of the plateau here. So it's, you know, hiding so you can't see it. So we stop there by the rules of overlapping. Okay. 
and then from this point we come down. This one we leave alone because it is, you know, pointing that way. Uh, okay, so that's the bottom part. We need to keep going up to the top too. So here's one. We go down and we stop when we hit the cliff, right? Because it goes down behind, right? And then same here from this point and from this point and from this point. Notice those are all bumpy, janky lines. And I want to go back, and this original zigzag that I made, those lines are too straight. We want that also to look rocky. And this is where erasing might start to come into play, because I, I want to make that line not straight, but rocky, bumpy, janky, right? And so I'm going to do that with the whole zigzag. Now, I'm just going to leave the original zigzag in place for now. We'll come back later and figure out whether we need to erase any of it or not. But um, for now, I'm just going to leave the original in place. Uh, as I move further back, there's going to be less detail. So with these ones that are kind of in the middle, we're going to, you know, do less of the jankiness here, less of the jankiness here. It's more wavy now, and then you just leave the ones that are further away because you're not going to see as much detail there. Up close, you're going to see these rocks quite a bit. We want to do exactly the same thing over here on this side. So in case you were hiding under one of these rocks here, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to explain the whole situation again. And so we're going to start by looking at this ziggity-zaggity, and we're going to look at, there's two different kinds of corners. There's corners that point into the canyon and corners that point towards the edge of the page. The ones that point towards the edge of the page, we leave alone. The ones that point towards the middle of the canyon, we drop a rocky, bumpy, janky line down towards the bottom. Rocky, bumpy, janky line down. Rocky, bumpy, rocky, bumpy. Like that. And then we go back to the original Ziggity Zaggity. And up close, we want it to be more rocky bumpy. Have more texture. That's what we're looking for here, texture. We, if we do nothing but straight lines, then it would look, I don't know, like very... Uh, it just wouldn't look natural. It wouldn't look like an actual rocky place if we use nothing but straight lines. Anyway, so we have basically made the canyon already. Like like this down here through the middle, this is the canyon. These are the two sides up above the canyon where you could have people on either side. Maybe maybe you got like Evil Knievel riding his motorcycle and he like hits a ramp and goes, jumps over the canyon. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, that's the foreground. Now it's time to work towards the middle ground and then the background. Okay, middle ground means it's not what's really close to you and it's not what's really far away. It's kind of what's in between, right? And so the tops of these cliffs are really close to us. A little bit further away, we're going to have down in the canyon. Maybe there's some like little hills past the canyon that we see. So sort of in between here, we're going to make like a bump and like a bump, maybe just two there, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we want a road that goes over a hill, over a hill, and then off towards the horizon. And to do that, uh, remember that the part that's close to us is gonna be wider, the part that's farther away is gonna be narrower, and when it gets to the horizon, just like in the river that we drew a couple weeks ago, we want it to come to a vanishing point on that horizon. So I'm gonna draw a dot on that horizon. That dot, which you can barely see on the camera, that dot right there, that is where the end of the road is going to be. I need to draw two lines from that dot that curve towards the top of this hill. And really, they're not, they're not curving towards the top of the hill. They're on the ground past the hill. So, like, this is the hill. They're, you know, the road is coming this way. But if you look at it this way, you, it's going to go behind, if that makes sense. Uh, and these two lines are going to come to a point here. So I'll just go ahead and draw 
one of them, and then the other one starts at that same vanishing point, and notice how close together those are. This part is super far away, so that's really, really narrow. Now, there's going to be some distance between the point where it disappears behind this hill and then where it comes up over the top of the hill. Because, like, if this, if this, you know, if my hand is a hill, this is the top of the hill, this is the bottom of the hill, the far side of the hill, well, there's distance from here where the road goes behind the hill to the top of the hill, right? There's some distance between there. So... When it comes up over the top of the hill, it's going to be wider than it was when it went behind the hill. And, and it also might not be coming right here in the middle. Like, maybe as it comes up the hill, it kind of winds off to a side. So it's going to from you know come from here and come down, right? We need to, that's one side of the road. We need to draw the other side of the road. If it's that wide, let's measure a little bit wider than that and move it over so that when it comes up over the hill here, it's wider here, it's wider right here than it was here when it went behind the hill. And then we also want it to be getting wider as it comes down here. So when it goes behind this next hill is wider here than it was when it came over the top of that hill. Always getting wider as it comes down towards us, right? Working towards the bottom of the page as it comes over this last hill. Maybe it comes up this side and then wraps around this side of the hill. So uh, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to kind of measure how wide that is. Make it a little wider. Move it over. All right. So it's going to kind of come like that. And then like that. And then notice how it's... When you compare where it comes over this hill to where it comes at the bottom of the hill, it's wider at the bottom towards us, right? Now, that gets us the, the general road going over a hill, over a hill, off into the distance. But when you see a road, you know, there's like lines down the middle of the road. There's like a dash line down the middle of the road. Now, I've done this in other videos before, too. Uh, we're going to kind of find the middle of the road. But instead of just like drawing dashes... What we want to do is we want to make little trapezoidy shapes. And the reason I say trapezoidy shapes instead of rectangles is because the part of this dash that's closest to me is going to be wider and it's going to get smaller as it goes away from me. Right? And you see how those are getting smaller? as they go further away. And then, um, uh, that's that's for this part really close to me, I'm actually gonna see each individual little dash, right? Each individual little mark is gonna be have that shape to it. On this next hill, I'm barely gonna be able to see, and maybe they'll just be dashes almost running into dots. And then the, this far part away here, like way far away, I'm not even gonna see those little lines painted on the road. Like, it's so far away, I'm not going to be able to see that detail, right? So now we've got two things. We've got the foreground and the middle ground. And interestingly, we've got different textures going on, right? We've got this rocky, bumpy, gnarly texture. And then we've kind of got this smooth, hilly texture. And um, we want to kind of play with both of those things throughout this picture uh, and, and carry those ideas in several other areas. So let's take this rocky, bumpy texture idea and let's make some distant mountains. Now, it's mountains mountains are huge, they're ginormous, but if they're far away, they're, they're still gonna be a big part of the picture unless they're like super, super far away. Now, the horizon can kind of be our guide on, you know, if a mountain is on our side of the horizon, the bottom of the mountain is gonna be down below the horizon the top of it is still going to be above the horizon, right? Because it's still going to be a tall mountain. Then there are going to be some mountains that are so far away that they're past the horizon, but we still see the tops of those mountains coming up. So let me show you how that's going to work. Kind of over here in this space, below the horizon, behind this, we're going to kind of, you know, cap off the end of our um, cliff there and erase... Uh, the little bit of the horizon there. Then also behind 
behind the, uh, the, the cliff here, but in front of the horizon. So down below the horizon, we're going to draw the bottom edge of a mountain. It can be just kind of a... It doesn't have to be perfectly, like, you know, rocky, janky, pokey, jagged. Uh, it can be a little smoother. Uh, when we get to the top peaks of the mountains, we're going to want it to be more jagged, though. Uh, which is what we're about to do here. So, going up the side of the mountain, we're, and, and at the top of the mountain, we get these nice, sharp peaks. All right, I'm going to darken that up so the camera can see it better. There's the basic shape of our mountain. Now we've got this line through the middle of our mountain. That's where the horizon was. We need to erase that. The part of it that goes behind our mountain needs to be erased. Okay, so we've got a mountain in what, what we would call like the back of the middle ground. It's still not the background. It's still not super, super, super far away. But it's getting close. Maybe I'll do one more mountain right behind that one, closer to the horizon here. So we'll have, you know, there's the, the bottom of the mountain, the base of the mountain. Now, if it is closer to the horizon, notice it's smaller. So the peaks don't come up quite as high as the peaks did on these ones, right? It's still on our side of the horizon, so we do need to erase that little bit of the horizon there. And maybe the last mountain, there's going to be another one that kind of comes right here from the edge of the street. And just like just like we did in that other river video, I'm going to use the edge of that street, just like I used the edge of the river, to kind of guide my way up this mountain peak. There we go. Oh, I do need to erase that little bit of the horizon that's right there. So I have darkened up some of these lines. Hopefully that makes things a little easier to see. If I was really doing this uh, for realsies, I would make sure that these distant mountains are actually not as dark because as things get farther away, you're going to see less detail. But I wanted you to be able to see that here on the video. So I did darken up the lines around those mountains. Hopefully that shows up a little better. We're going to move on and make some really distant mountains that are so far away, they're on the other side of the horizon. And we're going to do that starting here. Notice it's not going to be as tall even as this one, right? As they get farther and farther away, they're going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So this next mountain that's past the horizon is farther away than this one. So it should be smaller. So the top of it should not be as high. So something like that. And again, I can make a few more that overlap and overlap in layers. And it's like there's this range of mountains that goes kind of from this the edge of this cliff, and then you get this range of mountains that goes off into the distance in a sort of in a line. And maybe I'll finish that off with just a couple really itty bitty tiny ones over here. So far we have half a picture. Everything at the bottom is pretty cool, pretty awesome, pretty finished, pretty wonderful, pretty nice, but then there's a huge nothing in the sky. Now, a lot of times in the desert, that's exactly what you would see, a whole lot of nothing. Sometimes, though, in the desert you can see distant clouds that are super, super, super far away, even though there might not be any there in the desert. Although sometimes, you know, even in the desert, there might be clouds in the sky, uh, it just won't rain from them, right? So it won't be rain clouds, it won't be storm clouds, it'll just be fluffy clouds that are passing along. Anyway, I'm going to sort of flip the script here. What we've been doing is things at the bottom of the page are bigger, and then they get smaller and smaller as they get closer to the horizon, you know, as they get higher up on the page. Well, in the sky, it's backwards from that. Things at the top of the page are bigger because they're closer to us, and they get smaller as they get farther away. So the horizon is the farthest away, right? The horizon is so far away. Now, things that are away from the horizon in your picture, like the top and bottom of the paper, are far away from the horizon, right? So things there should be bigger. And then as things move towards the middle of the page, where the horizon is, they should get smaller. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just draw some fluffy clouds. Uh, big old fluffy cloud up at the top. Big, big, big fluffy cloud. One way to draw clouds, I like to draw them like this. We get a kind of a straight bottom and then a big fluffy top. There's a big old cloud. Now, if that same cloud was here, 
it would be half as big, right? If it was closer to the horizon. So I'm going to draw another cloud here in the middle. Notice that that cloud, you can barely see it. I'm going to darken it up. I should have just used a Sharpie for this picture. Notice that that cloud is like half as big as this one because it's like twice as far away. Why is it? How do we know that? Because it's closer to the horizon, right? This one's farther away from the horizon, so it's closer to us. This one is closer to the horizon, so it's farther away, which means it's smaller. And then another one in the middle here would also be smaller. And then if I had another one here, it would also be smaller. And the same would be true for like birds, if you had birds flying in the sky. Now, birds could be flying at any height, so it's a little bit different because like there could be a bird right in the middle that's like close to us, but just, you know, right in the middle of our face. Or we could have birds flying up in the corner or, you know, off in the distance or something. But the same kind of thing would, would apply if you were drawing birds. Like if I'm drawing birds, just my simple way of drawing birds, and I'm drawing them up high at the top of the page, they're going to be big because they're closer to me. Uh, but if I was going to draw that same flock of birds down here, this is closer to the horizon, so they would be much smaller. Right? Same concept. Anyway, I have gone back now and traced with a Sharpie just to make sure everything is super easy to see. And um, this basically is, uh, you know, finished enough. Uh, you could add, if you wanted, you could add like a cactus or two, maybe um, some people walking down the road, maybe uh, some, maybe a sunset, um, maybe you could add in some. Uh, some shadows like there's a lot that could be done with shadows here to make this a very interesting landscape um, there's lots of other ideas you know like little tumbleweeds blowing across the road it is a desert so think about things that might you know be in the desert think though you would have more detail up here up because uh, this is the foreground so you know maybe uh, maybe I would have you know some rocks or you know bumpy Maybe I'd have, uh, you know, a cactus up here, uh, you know, because this, this is the foreground, right? I'm not going to spend the time to draw every single tiny little, um, you know, spike on the cactus, but I can get enough, you know, get an indication that there are spikes there. Anyway, you get the idea. Like, if I was going to draw that same cactus like further away like down here if i was going to draw that same cactus here it'd be like half as big right it'd be, it'd be tiny little cactus right something like that and i probably wouldn't see much in the way of the spikes right just just a tiny bit right you get the idea anyway you can add as much as you want you could color paint you know whatever totally up to you how you want to finish that off and when you get done, share it with me. I'd love to see how it turned out.